Let's see if prayer can change Amen. one of us Amen. in this sanctuary this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, you say that prayer can change. Mm. Change a sinner into a saint. Yes. An unrighteous man into a righteous man. An unholy person to a holy person. Because without faith, it's impossible to please you. But those that believe in you, yeah. believe that thou art God. So Lord, be God in this sanctuary this morning. Move by your word. Move through your spirit. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. May all be seated. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody, uh, where's um, Denise? She just walked up. Oh, she that's okay. Amen. Let's go to our verse this morning. The one that we started. How God moved through the prophets. Amen. 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 Psalm 74, over verse 9. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. We don't see the prophets like they are defined and described in the scriptures. And when I started this series on the prophets, uh, a lot of you still don't know who a prophet is. And I try to show who and what a prophet is by the prophet Jesus himself. In his day, he would ask his disciples, he would say, who do men say that I am? And the disciples, the different ones that were following him said, some say you are Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was a prophet. Some say you are Isaiah. So the audience where Jesus was ministering in his day likened him to one of the prophets in the old days. He then said to the disciples, that's who they say I am because I go out among them as a prophet. <laughs> but to you that sit with me and eat with me, who do you say that I am? So on the outside of the disciples, he was a prophet. But inside the group, he was the son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. But outside, he was the prophet. The one that was prophesied and talked about by the prophets. Because Peter says that the spirit of Christ was in the Old Testament prophets. Prophesying about the grace of God that will come unto you whom see, who receive the Holy Spirit coming down and out of heaven from God. So this morning, I want to go a little deeper into some of the messages I already shared to this audience and the, and the audience that we're streaming to concerning who are you? And why did Jesus say, tear down the old church and the old religion? I say to you this morning, if you was to go back in history, not to the days of Christ, not to the days of, uh, of Moses and, and, and those days, but just go back a few years in, in America. Let's go back and travel 40 years ago. And 40 years ago, there was something going around where people were being baptized by someone called the Holy Ghost. 
But most of the churches of the day rejected that experience and that teaching. They said it was demonic. So if you was in one of the denomination of churches, the mainstream churches of the day, that's the day, 40 years ago, if the Holy Spirit experience came to you, it was considered demonic by mainstream Christianity in America and throughout the world. Not a hundred years ago, not a thousand years ago, but no, long, no more than 40 years ago. The Holy Spirit came and began to fall in the different types of churches in, the, in this vicinity, in, in this area. And pastors began, and priests and pastors received what we call the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When they received that experience, it caused a rift in their churches. Because God's Spirit began to fall on every denomination that we know of today. Because our God is not a respecter of people. And people were forced out of the church that they had been trained in because of a, a, an experience that they received from God. Mm. And so now you had people who had the baptism of the Holy Spirit outside of their mainstream religion and their mainstream church, but they never received the doctrine of the Spirit that they were baptized by. They went out of their churches with those teachings and with the experience that God gave them from heaven. They're still waiting on the prophet. They're still waiting on the apostles. Not the apostles of the church that they attended, not, nor of the prophets of the church that they attended. For in the church that they attended, both those apostles and prophets told them it was not of God. And so we are living in a time and day when things are not of God. And so there's still a lot of more truths that need to come into the body of Christ that the church don't want us to have. So Jesus in his day, look in the book of Matthew with me. Matthew chapter 23, starting with verse 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So Jesus coming to the church in his day says, The Pharisees and the scribes are sitting in the seat of the, 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 the highest position in the, in the body of Moses. It's very important that you understand he's talking about Moses' seat and not his. So he says, in Moses' church, the people that are sitting in the seat to represent Moses, to, to the people of God, they are Pharisees and scribes. Let's continue to read. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. He does not tell them to run out of the church of their day. He said, but let me tell you about the people that are sitting in the position of authority to represent God and represent Moses. Let me tell you who they are. So Jesus in his day is going to tell his disciples who and what the church is that they attend and believe in. Continue. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all the works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their flycatchers and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the most uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Or in our day, Pastor, a pastor. He's telling them about what religion is like in their day. Continue. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, 
which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So he's telling them, he's trying to <coughs> tell them something. Then this is right before his crucifixion. Mm -hmm. they, he, he's going to tell them something that's going to get him crucified. Because he's going to touch the church of that day. He's going to touch those that seek or sit in Moses' seat. He's touching religion. Prophets are called to touch the religion that's in your life. And so then Jesus is going to start the woes. Verse 13. The woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering. So the institute of religion in the days of Jesus, the leaders of those, the priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, the different orders that existed then, they keep people from entering the kingdom of heaven. But they did not stop people from being saved. There's a difference. They would not permit you to go into heaven, but they did permit you to see it. Why? Because they had the living oracles of God that God had given to Moses. And if you listen to those oracles, and if you abide to, by those oracles, you would have what we would call salvation. But they would not let anyone enter the kingdom of heaven. So God sent John the Baptist, the prophet John, and he began to say to the people, because he did not go to the church and the institution, knowing that he could never speak to those leaders that was keeping people out of the kingdom of heaven. So he went to the body of the body of the church, not the head and the leaders of the church. And so he came and he preached in the streets. He preached in the wilderness. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So he was the voice crying out in the wilderness, not crying out in the church. Get ready for the coming of the Lord. So we see not our signs. The sign of the prophet to tell you to the body, not to the head. Repent. Repent. Why? He's coming back. But this time without sin. He's not coming back to tell you about repentance. When Christ come back, he's coming to give his reward to those that suffered inside of churches continue please woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you devour widows houses and for a pretense make long prayers therefore you will receive greater condemnation so he said in those days that the priests and the and the and the, and the, and the ministers of those days knew how to give messages to get the money for the widows they knew how to do the right type of collections to get every penny from them. To put them under the condemnation to give all that they had to the church. So he said, woe to you. You know how to devour the widow's house. You know how to take advantage of their low, um, what's the word? Low estate. Low estate. Mm -hmm. You know how to do that. That's done in religion. One church that's famous in the world, they, they told people that if you gave them so much money, you could actually get your people out of hell. Yes. <laughs> and God sent prophets to tell them that was not of him. No. Do you know they killed those prophets? Yeah. Do you know that was only a few hundred years ago? Wow. Do you know a hundred or more years ago, if you lived in America, and you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Do you know they called you a witch and they burned you? Yeah. Wow. In America. Yeah. 
If you receive an experience and you begin to speak in the unknown language, mm. if, you, if you got filled by the Holy Ghost only because you love God, mm. in America, in the churches over 100 years ago, they will have burned you for speaking in a language that God gave you that was holy. Do you know just a few hundred years ago in America and in Europe, if you wanted to be baptized into Christ, which is baptized in water, what we call water baptism, do you know that they would have drowned you? They would have wrapped you to a chair. So in America, in our history, in the different colonies where they did not believe what other colonies believed, they were killing each other's disciples because they had an experience or a, a, a one of the experience from a living God. That's the history of the church. If you go to Europe and look at all of the big cathedrals and the churches that was built 200 years ago and 400 years ago, you'll find that they're empty. They have no members today because when God sent prophets to those churches in Europe and said, thus said the Holy Spirit, thus said the God of Israel, let my people go. They did not listen. So those churches today are museums. Wow. They're not a place of worship. They are museums. So history of the church, whether it be in America, whether it be in Europe, whether it be in Israel, it does not matter where you look. Let my people Go that they may serve me upon my holy mountain. That's the road of a prophet. He comes out of the wilderness proclaiming the salvation of his Lord. Continue to read, please. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, <coughs> for you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. You like to evangelize, but you make disciples after your denomination and not after the kingdom of Christ. And so you saw the crusades. You, you got the history of the crusades where people would go into other people and you got the missionaries that came from Europe, that came to America the, with the Indians. Did you see how successful they were in converting Indians? Do you see? Do you do, do you do you see the statistics? They kill them in the name of God. Continue, please. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, "Whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it." Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold? or the temple that sanctifies the gold. How religion, when you look at it, it doesn't make sense. Neither did it make sense in the days of Jesus. But we can't say anything against religion. God doesn't send the modern day prophets into churches. He sent John into the wilderness. And the people who wanted to hear John went into the wilderness. He didn't go into the churches and baptize or sprinkle people. He went to the Jordan. And people came to him confessing their sins. But when he saw the scribes and the Pharisees coming, he said, you denton of vipers, who asked you to flee from the wrath of God? You have no fruit of repentance. You are so holy, you have no sin. That's the power of religion. You get in church, and then you think you're a saint. You forget you're a sinner going to church. Ask the people you work with. Ask your neighbor, have you reached sainthood? So you put more trust in your temple and then you do in God. We go to and you name your church. You, you, you lift your church up, but you never lift up God. See, Jesus said, if I be lifted up 
on the cross, taking people's sin. I will draw people to me and away from the church. The cross that Jesus hung up is not the one inside of church. Do you know most churches have a cross in it of Christ? Christ never got hung up inside of a church. The Bible said he suffered outside of the gate. Because that's how he get people out of church. He, the prophet is calling you to come out of religion. But not leave your church. You see, if you read verse 1 and 2, he says, I didn't ask you to leave church. I asked you to get religion out of you. Why? For they sit in Moses' seat. Do as they say, but not as they do. If they go quoting the scripture, do the scripture. Even though they can't live it. Continue, please. And whoever swells by the altar, it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind. For which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? Therefore he who swears by the altar, swears by it and by all things on it. He who swears by the temple, swears by it and by him who dwells in it. And he who swears by heaven, swears by the throne of God and by whom him who sits on it. You know, in America they have taken God off the throne of law and order. There's no more going to the court putting your hand on the Bible and swearing to God because God is no longer in their temple nor is he in their mouth or their heart God has been removed from America before your eyes there is no law in America other than evil so you're living in the generation of evil and God is sending you a prophet to warn you, be careful what party you belong to. Because God is not in either party in America. God is in heaven. <laughs> and the earth is his footstool. Continue, please. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you pay the tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters. So he says, you, you believe in tithes and offerings and you preach it on TV. You preach it every Sunday. Every Sunday you say to the people, you must tithe. But he said, you never tell them which is higher than the tithe. What? Justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. I didn't tell you not to preach tithe and often, but you left off mercy, faith, justice. Imagine if there was justice being preached in America today. There'd be no impeachment trials. That has nothing to do with justice. That has to do with politics. Never assume God is in politics. For this is what Paul the Apostle says. No man that wolf entangle himself in the politics of his day. That he may be a faithful soldier of Christ. And if you strive for the mastery, you must strive lawfully or you will never be crowned. Moving right along to my message. Continue please. Blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. How did that speak for itself? Go ahead, Jesus. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. So the inside, you're out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking, because from the heart, man commit adultery. He steals, he lies, he kills. So hence Jesus said if a man was to look on a woman to lust, 
he committed adultery. If you hate your brother, you're already a murderer. Ask yourself, is hate being preached from your TV 24-7 every day? Do you know hate is being preached in your sports? Do you know you're trained to hate the other team? You don't even know it. Do you know pastors got whole Sundays devoted to their team because it's NFL season? And they want all the church to believe in the, in the, in the team that they will believe in? Because they don't have programs for the other teams. So they can change the time of their service based off of their team or their church team. But do you know there's no cowboys or redskins in Christ Jesus? <laughs> Just people that play football? There's no Pittsburgh in New England in Christ Jesus? Your team is not in Jesus, but players on the team might be. But they might be on a team that you don't like. So when you're hating on that team, you're hating on that man of God that's on that team. And so when you say, kill him, break that arm, that's coming from your temple. Continue, please. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Now, who wants a prophet like that to speak to them in their service on Sunday? <laughs> who wants somebody to make it that real? So hence, prophet speaks outside of the church. So some prophets think they're supposed to be inside the church. But read the Gospels of Jesus. Read Matthew. Those prophets are outside. And every time one of them went inside, they told him, get out. They were asked the prophet, by what authority are you inside my church? Who gave you the authority to turn over these tables? Continue, please. Well, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous, and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. So imagine living in the day and hearing me. But I don't preach like your regular prophets. When you hear my message, it's about the gospel that you read. I quote from this book. I'm reading what the prophet Jesus said to the people of his day about the church in the day. Dare I touch your church? Dare I touch your temple today? Because prophets touch the church of their day, not the one of yesterday. Well, because yesterday, church, your fathers killed the prophets that God sent to them. Hence, if you go to Europe, you go to places where all of our churches, the day that we have in America come from, you'll see they're empty. Why? Because they killed the prophets that God sent them. And when you kill God's prophet, he will empty your church. Wow. Continue, please. Therefore, you are witnesses against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers. Now you can't tell the church of the day that they're brood of vipers and serpents. How dare Jesus say that to the church of this day? Would God send a prophet to say that to the leaders of a church, of an organization? Surely he's not talking about all of them, are he? Maybe he should tone it down. Jesus should tone it down. But read the gospel. Do you see any tone down? All you see is woe. <laughs> see, there's no tone down. There's woe, 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 woe. Jesus is full of woe as a prophet. He went into towns. 
He went into Bethsaida and Chorazin. He went into those towns and he performed the miracles that prophets performed. Then when he saw no repentance, but he saw them going to the church, but no change in their life, no change in their character, no change in their attitude, no change in their behavior. He turned to those cities and said, Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! Woe unto thee, Chorazin! For if the mighty works that was done in you was done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes, but it would be more tolerable for them on the day of judgment than for you. Whoa! That's the role of a prophet. He's not a priest. He's not a pastor. He's not an apostle. He's a prophet. And God has put woe in his mouth. Continue, please. How can you escape the condemnation of hell? How can you escape? Prophets tell the church, how can you escape being in church? Church cannot save you from hell. You can't run a church and escape hell. They're the first group that's going. Continue, please. Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets. I send you prophets. Wise men and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify. And some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. That on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel. Because he was a prophet that Cain killed. He's saying, I tell you, I will continue to send them and you will continue to kill them. Do you know that word is from Jesus and it had, and, and it's still being fulfilled today in your in your in your generation? In the generation of your father and your grandfather and your great grandfather. Do you know when God sends prophets, and we're not talking about pastors. We're not talking about apostles. We're not talking about priests. We're talking about what happens when God sends the prophet. Because we see, continue. Watch this, because I'm getting ready to go into my message. From the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Assuredly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. He said, I'm getting all of y'all back. So why does God permit today it to continue? Because he wants you to be a witness against yourself that you choose religion over life. You choose religion over life. Because you cannot look at the past and see what God has judged. Do you know the angels that kept not their estate, God has reserved them in chains of darkness? Do you know that the world that would not submit to his spirit and grieved it, he put under water? Do you know that he, the lowest place on the earth today, God judged him with fire and brimstone called Sodom and Gomorrah? Do you have any idea of all the judgments that you watched 100 years ago, 20 years ago, God has sent every judgment on the earth? Do you know he has not gotten the church attention? Because the world is more brighter to them than the judgments of God. So he said, love not the world. Neither the things of the world. For any man that loved that, the love of the Father cannot be found in you. Go ahead, verse 37. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem! Jerusalem. Jerusalem! The one who kills the prophets. The one that kills the prophets. And stones those who are sent to her. How often. This is where Jesus weeps. Jerusalem. Jerusalem.
Jerusalem, thou that kills the prophets, and everyone I send you, I would have gathered you to myself. I would have made you something. I would have brought you into the glory of a living God. But verse 38. But you were not willing. But you're not willing. Oh church. Oh church. I want to be in you. I want to be a member of your church. But you don't want to be a member of my church. So I'm going to send prophets to tell you. I'm going to tear your church. Down. I will tear it down brick by brick, member by member, from the head to the bottom of the soul. The soul. I'm tearing everything down. Your greatest leaders, I'm going to expose. Your gods, I will cut them down one at a time. Whoa, whoa, and whoa. So Jesus, in his day being a prophet, he says, tear this church down. No more Jehovah. Why? God's son is here. Not the angel that he sent with you to keep you in the way. And I told you, do not harden your heart with him, for I put the name Jehovah in him. Surely you will believe my son, though you did not believe my angel. So he came to his own, and his own received him not. Oh, it looked bad for us. But as many that received him, to them gave him them power to become the children of a living God. Prophets come to tell you how to become God's child. That's the role of a prophet. To get you out of religion and to get you into Christ. So the only way Christ could get people out of religion was that they had to be born again. For every man born of flesh is religious. He is a carnal man. But anybody that was born of spirit, John 3, Jesus said, that which is flesh is flesh. But that which is spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. I got to get you. And if I can't get in you to get the church and religion out of you, I can never get you in a real church. Why? Because if I get in you, you can stay in the church where you are and do as they say, but not as they do. Why? Because greater is he that will be in you than the church that you're in. And so Paul had to clear it up. Why? People keep wanting to go to the church and don't want to be one. Galatians chapter 4. Oh, help me, Paul. Galatians 4, Paul talking about, as we heard last week, I don't want to go over last week's message, how he, who is the Jew and who is the real Israel. Paul had to help the church understand what was real. In Galatians 4, he started, he's talking about verses, um, verse 10. You observe days and months. 
and seasons and years. You got Christmas and Thanksgiving. You got all these holy days. You, and so he talked about the holidays that they had because they had rituals and they had, they had feasts and, 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 and they kept their religious feasts. He said you observe all of that. I'm afraid for you. Lest I have labored for you in vain. I have labored for you in vain. You still are caught up in your holidays. But you're not caught up in Christ. You think he had an easy job preaching to people that was church? Continue. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. I urge you. Why? Because concerning the law, I was blameless. I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisee. I'm a Hebrew from the tribe of Benjamin. Still, I persecuted people who came against my religion. But when I came to the revelation of Christ, I counted religion as done. Continue. You have not injured me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God. You received me as if you, I was Jehovah. And now in 16, he said, have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. See, verse 16, he said, Have I now become the enemy? Because I'm touching the stuff you have faith in, your holy days, your high days. I'm messing with your traditions and your religion that have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Verse 19. My little children, for whom I labor and birth again, until Christ is formed in you. I'm trying to get Christ formed in you. Apostles and prophets try to get Christ in you, the hope of glory. We try to feed the new creation if you've been born again. I can't feed a religious person. They have Moses. Wow. I only can feed those that are in Christ and with Christ and been born by Christ. Others cannot hear my doctrine because the God of this world has blinded the minds of the disobedience. Verse 21. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law. Those of you that still want to be under the old covenant, don't you hear the covenant itself? Let's see what the covenant told you. For it is written that Abraham had two sons. So he has two sons. The one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. One from a woman that was a slave, and one from a woman that was free. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise. So we have a child that's born naturally, and a child that is born again. <laughs> that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. As it is born by a promise, Sarah conceived seed because it was the seed of faith to have the child. Well, you needed no faith with Abraham and Hagar. So he said, I'm trying to tell the church something. <laughs> Go ahead, apostle. Which things are symbolic? So I wanted to tell you, did you know those things were symbolic? Did you know it had to happen? That's why the angel of the Lord met Hagar in the way and opened her eyes up to living water? That's why the, the, the Muslims to this day are still on the earth because they are damned by a living God. The same God that was with Isaac is the same God that was with Ishmael. Continue. For these are the two covenants. So here are the two covenants. Wow. The one from Mount Sinai. So there's an Old Testament. How many got a Bible in my audience today? Wow. How many of you know there's two covenants? Yes. One called the Old Covenant. Yeah. The other one called the New Covenant. Yeah. 
So you got the Old Testament and the New Testament. So he said, let me tell you about your Bible. Let me tell you about your Bible. The one that you religious carry the church and carry the work. There's two parts to it. But you don't understand part one. And you sure don't understand part two. Paul, help them. The one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage. So one of them, one of those testaments in your book will put you in bondage. And the other one, which is Hagar, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is. So he said, this Hagar, where God spoke them in Mount Sinai, was in the wilderness because he couldn't bring them into the promised land. So he sends the angel to speak to them in the wilderness. He said, do you understand? It corresponds, watch what he says, y'all, to Jerusalem, which now is. And, is and, and in his bondage with her children. Israel today is in bondage with her children. The Old Testament is the testament for slaves brought out of Egypt. I no longer call you slaves, but I call you friends. For the slave does not know what his master's up to. Yes. I'm calling you out of slavery of religion. If you got ears to hear. Continue, please. But the Jerusalem above? But there's a church and a Jerusalem above. Is what, y'all? Free. free. It's free. Jesus. Churches you can't get in the day down here because of their doctrine. But Jerusalem above is free and it's the mother of us all. So imagine being black in America 150 years ago. You couldn't go to the white churches. I don't care what denomination it was. Why? You was considered an animal even by the Constitution of America when they said black people were animals. They amended the Constitution because at first they said all men were equal unto God except you. That's right. And I hope you don't think they set you free. No, what set black free in America is they worship God in spirit and in truth. And God sent them women prophets yes. like, like, like Harriet Tubman. Yes. And, and you know what they called her? The, the, the black Moses. He, he didn't send a, 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 a black male Moses. I mean, you got to love God how he moves. And, you know, he sent a black female Moses. Why? He took the spirit of what Moses had and put it on that woman. And she went down and said, let my people go. And they said no. So she said, I'll take them out. They put a reward on her, but she never got caught. You know why she never got caught? Because if anybody be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, that woman was brand new in Jesus. Right now, blacks have no idea of the calling on us right now. Because white Christianity taught that nor put a curse on Cain. And people don't realize that's not a curse. That was a prophecy of the future. How God was going to move through that boy that was born that nor did not recognize. Exactly. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Are you? Are you the next Moses? The next Elijah? Who are you? 
You must be someone because I'm calling and I'm sent to you. Continue, please. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of and promise. So we are the children of promise. We're not natural Jews. And last week you heard that he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and whose circumcision is of the heart, not of the flesh. That we minister not by the letter of the Old Testament, but we, we, we minister with the spirit of grace, having no letters. Where are your degrees, prophet? <laughs> well, when I went to heaven, they didn't give me no paper. <laughs> and if they did, I wouldn't be able to show it to you because it would have been spiritual paper. <laughs> so they had to write it upon my heart. I had to memorize it. And so people don't understand when Jesus said, tear this church down, that he was going to start building another Jerusalem. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 22. Remember the book of Hebrew is written to the Hebrews. And it's the Hebrews that came out of Egypt. And in the he it was the Hebrews that got Jehovah. And so the writer of Hebrews is telling the Hebrews that he's writing to, let go of Jehovah. So he says in chapter 1, to which of the angels that God said at any time, thou art my son. But when he bring the first begotten into the world, he said, let Jehovah worship him. Why? Because he made Jehovah. He said in the Psalms to the prophet, I have put my word above my name, Jehovah. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld the glory of the only begotten of God, full of grace and truth. For the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came from Jesus Christ. He was in the world, and the world recognized him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. Being not born of the flesh, not born of blood, not born by the will of man, but born There's a heavenly church. It's open 24-7. And it's the mother of us all. If you're in Africa, you can get to it. If you're in the Antarctic, you can get to it. If you're in South America, you can go to the service. If the service is 24-7. Let's see who the members of the church is. Come on. Come on. To an innumerable company of angels. Oh, you can't count them. They're in the church. <laughs> to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. All of those born again in Christ are there. Who are registered in heaven. Your name is registered in heaven. Go ahead. You're there. To God, the judge of all. God is there. To the spirits of justice. Oh my God, I mean, you got the spirits of men who haven't gotten their body yet. Their spirits are there and they made perfect. They're already perfect. Yeah. They're in the church. Go and boy, you, you, you. <laughs> to Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Gee, tell somebody, Jesus in the church. <laughs> of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Jesus in the church. Jesus in the church. So John is on the island of Patmos. He, he don't know he can come to church. And so he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And, and, and he heard a voice behind him say, come up here. 
Oh, y'all yeah, not hear me. He said, see, he wanted to be in church, but he was in jail. He's in jail, but he didn't know you could be in jail and be in church. So he said, I was on the island of Panama because I preached the wrong thing and the wrong message at the right time. <laughs> If you're going to preach the wrong thing, make sure it's the right time when you're preaching. <laughs> and they put John in burning oil to silence his message. But it kept popping up. <laughs> he was the Shadrach and the Mesh Meshach and the Abednego. He was all of them in one. Why? Because fire was in him. There was more fire in him than the fire they put him in. So they said, we can't kill him, but we can put him on the island. <laughs> That'll keep him out of church. But he said, you couldn't put me on the island and keep me out of church. Why? Church open 24 7. <laughs> so I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. How do you get to the New Jerusalem, John? You got to be in the spirit. Come on, man. You can't just be born again. You got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Woo. You got to have a, pay, a space suit to get there. So you got to be baptized into the suit called Jesus. Yeah. You got to put on Christ. Yeah. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then you can go up to Jerusalem. So he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I had my suit on. I, got, I made sure I made all the oxygen I can. I built up my most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. I got filled. I got filled. I got filled. I got filled. Feel, I got filled, and all of a sudden, as I got filled, I heard a voice say, boy, come on to church, come on to church, come on to church. Come on to church. He said, and a door was open in heaven. And he said, I, sound, I heard a voice that sounded like thunder, like the almighty. Say, boy, come on up here. And he said, immediately. I was in the spirit and in heaven. And what did you see? Well, we, we saw who's there. So look in Revelation 1. Look who was there. Revelation 1, and verse 11. Look who was there. Saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book Jesus. and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. He said, I, I saw him in the New Jerusalem, and he was messing with the candlesticks. Then he would say to me, do you know what I'm messing with? But he told you the name of each candlestick. Go back. They're all churches. Yes. He said, come here. Come to church and see that I'm down in the churches down there too. I'm walking in the midst of them in the spirit. I'm up here and down there at the same time. Why? Because I got Christ in people down there. And then there's people that are up here. Oh, y'all not hear me? See, 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 you're supposed to be in church in two places, in this building and in that building. Yeah, yeah, see, see, are you connected? Have you been consummated? Have you been born again? It's 23 chromosomes down here and the 20 other three up there that when the rapture comes, he put the 23 together and then you see who you are. This is a mystery, but I'm talking about uh, Christ. And, and his church, how a man and a woman will become one. Now, this is a mystery. I guess it ain't a mystery anymore since I told you, right? Oh. Let's, let's continue. <laughs> his feet were like fine brass as it refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And so the prophets of old kept talking about this city that was going to come. Psalms 87, verse 3. 
Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. Selah. Paul, stop. So the prophets that had Christ in them were prophesying of the city that he would build. So they would say, city, O city, O city of God, glorious things are spoken of you. City, O city, O city of God, glorious things are spoken of you. Then they say, this one and that one was born in her. Glory, my the joy are in you. And so, you know where they get that from? A prophecy of the future. Of you. Of you and me. We're the city of God. We're the new temple. We just one stone, each one of us in the temple. We are living stones. We are living stones. I'm a living stone. I'm built upon the foundations of Christ. Ephesians 2. <clears throat> verse 20 to 22. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. So God is going to use each one of our, the bricks that he's put a different spirit of Christ in. He's saying, if you've been born again, it's just like the natural. I have three sons, three sons come to me real quick, please. David, Michael, and Aaron James, come here real quick. Oh, two. Oh, come on, come on, come on, boys. Is AJ, where's AJ go? He's here. Oh, yeah, okay, that's all right, all right. Eric, come here. <laughs> and so, I, when you got born again by a sperm that was spiritual, this boy is born in the natural. This boy is born in the natural. There's Aaron James, my three sons. See, my three sons. <laughs> so, my three sons all have a seed from me. I am their father. Our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. In order for the kingdom come, he had to put a seed in him. And so now he becomes a temple. Why? He has God's seed. So I, he was born by the natural seed. Now watch this. I had a second son. Michael. I used a different seed. But it's the same father. Then I had a third son. I use a different seed, but it's the same father. He does not have his seed, but he has mine. <coughs> he does not have his seed, but he has mine. They don't have his seed, but he has mine. Being born again, not of corruptible sperm, but a living sperm that makes you unique from your brother and your sister. Every one of you are a temple in yourself. So his, he got his body, he has his body, and he has his body. Somebody says how. Why? Know you not that you are the temple of God. And so the temple of God must have his seed in it to be a temple. Amen. So they are not the same, but they are known as the sons of Hern. As many as received him, to them gave him a seed to become a child of God. Born not of the flesh, not by blood, not by the will of man, but God put his holy seed in Aaron. He put a holy seed in Michael. He put another holy seed in David. You know, none of them are like him. Wow. So it's impossible for Michael to preach Jesus, um, um, the Jesus that uh, AJ preached. That's right. Because he got a different Jesus. Wow. But the same father. Y'all may say that. So hold on, come back here. Hold on, come, come back here. Come back here. Because the right Hebrew says he's not ashamed to call them brothers. He said, I am the children that the Lord has gave me are for signs and wonders. Why? It's more than one Christ. 
Jesus. Oh, y'all ain't hear that? Yeah. This boy, they were not Christ's name. Yeah. Hey, what did they call them? Christians. Yeah. Christians, y'all may be seen. Yeah. Jesus. And so in, in 1 John 3, starting with verse 1 to 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. That we should be called children of God. Wow, I can't believe it. Boys, come on back. Oh, come on. Behold, 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 behold. What man of love that the Father bestowed upon us. It ain't just one Jesus anymore. Ah. It's not just one Jesus anymore. Behold what man of love the Father has bestowed on us, on you, on me. That we, not I, should be called the children of God, the sons of God. Yes. And it does not yet appear what we should look like. But when he appear, we should all look like him. Yes. And everybody that has this hope, in other words, everybody that got a seed of hope inside of them, mm. they purify themselves as he's pure. Yes, Why? Because they know that they're not walking after what they see. Yes. They're not walking after a temple that will be, be dissolved. But we have an eternal house in heaven yes. reserved for us where this that's inside of my boys will go into that which is inside of God. That God may be all in all. Yes. Father, that they may be one even as you and I are one. I and you and you and me. That the world may know I sent them. Jesus. Y'all may be seen. <laughs> to tell you who you are, yes. not who you're not. Mm. You want to know who you're not, you go to church. Jesus. And when you go to church, you're going to find out you ain't good. Woo. That's right. Why? That's what the Old Testament is for. It's to kill your righteousness. Amen. Wow. Amen. Jesus needed to come up under the old, lest he thought he was better than God. Jesus. And so the woman came to him and they say, Good master, what must I do? He said, whoa, 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 whoa. You ain't calling me good. Why? He, look at my body. In me, brother's no good thing. I put on my mom, but I've been born by my father. So I'm inside of sin, and you're trying to tell me I'm good. There ain't nobody good but God. But God can put a seed in bad people. seed in bad people. So that's why he opened his church in heaven so that you can't say who can go there. Mm. I believe I'm running out of time. I believe I'm running out of time. I can tell you this. I'm so great, glad I'm saved. I wish everybody was. So I could call everybody brother. My brother from another mother. <laughs> but I can't say that in Christ. You say, why can't you say that? Because Jerusalem above is the mother of us all. And Jerusalem above the mother, just Jerusalem, this Holy Spirit that is the temple of the living God, that Jesus was made a priest after the likeness of her, So that he could go inside of the Holy Ghost and minister. Because she was the priest of the Most High God. That's why every great person in history that did anything for the church, whether it be Joseph, had to marry a, pri a priestess. Yes. And the, the only priestess they could marry had to be that one of the high priest. So Joseph married the yes. daughter of the high priest. Moses went all the way down to the priest in Midian and married one of the daughters of the high priest of Midian. And Jesus would only marry those that are of the high priest, the Holy Ghost. Jesus. And so he said to the disciples, I can't marry you unless you tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with the spirit of the living God. And on the day of Pentecost, they heard a rushing wind as she came in with a mighty roar. She shouted when she got there. 
Boy, I had a really song popping in my head. I love. <laughs> my love is coming on. <laughs> At last, the love of God had come along. Hallelujah. That which the prophets talked about, where people would be filled with the love of God, it would be shared aboard in their hearts. Joel the prophet prophesied in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. And the Bibles that was on your counter, the old folks that you couldn't touch when you was young. Yeah. Now you got a Bible in your hand. Mm. But generations before you had no Bible because Bibles had not been printed nor written. They didn't have the printing press until 1549. And that's before Columbus came here. But before Columbus could come to break to the new world, somebody had to bring the word and put it in print to get it here. So before Columbus came in 1492, the printing press came 40 some years before that. Mm. And the first thing the printing press put out was the word of God. The word of God. Say somebody to put out the word of God. And by the time Columbus came, there was over a thousand Bibles now in the world. Do you know how many Bibles you got now, y'all? Do you know God has put the word in your hand? Do you know there was a time in our, my childhood we couldn't touch the Bible? You hear that? Right. And when I went to church, it was in Latin, y'all. I didn't know what the, the priest was saying. I just had to reflex and get that and do the creep. I, I don't know what they said, but it sure feel good listening to them. It felt good enough to know that the God was a father and he had a son named Jesus and Jesus had a mother named Mary. Oh, I thank God for the church that I was in. Oh my God. Oh, they may not have had the stuff that the Pentecostal church had, but they had enough to get me started. Oh, y'all ain't not with me. So, so, so the Lord said they, they had enough to get me started, y'all. And they got enough to start that car, and the car been running ever since. I ain't run out of gas yet. Yeah, I still, I still got as much God. I'm still trying to get more of God. Why? I build up my holy faith. I can't build yours up, but I can build mine up. Hey, Pastor, how you build it up? I pray in the Holy Ghost. I pray in the understanding and I pray in the spirit. I sing in the understanding and I sing in the spirit. I shout hallelujah and I shout Jesus. Hallelujah. Why? Hallelujah is praise ye to y'all. Yes. But I shout both. Why? Because my father gave the revelation of Jesus to him. He gave it to Jehovah. And Jehovah gave it to the servant John. And John gave it to the seven angels. Seven angels gave it to the seven pastors. Seven pastors gave it to the church. Oh, I can say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. I don't care which one. You see, I don't care which one, but I'm shouting. this and I'm closing. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. I'm closing on this y'all. I want you to hear this. this if you then were raised with Christ. If you, if, come on. If you've been raised with Christ they call it the Holy Spirit. Seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So where's Christ y'all? He's in church. He said but if you've been born again you've been baptized in water Filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, come up here. Mm -hmm. Come on, don't stop there. Verse 2. Set your mind on the things above. Oh, my God. Stop worrying about fried chicken. <laughs> you, Eunice, Eunice can fix chicken or something. There. I don't know what she fixed it there, but she fixed something. Don't stop worrying about Eunice's food. <laughs> stop thinking about the food. Wait, not there in the, in the foyer for you. I want you to think of the things above, y'all. Thank you. And not the things down here on earth. Wow. Verse 3. Why? Why? Pat? Before you died. Huh. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. That when Christ, go ahead, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, mm. appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I'm in church right now in both places. I hope you feel it this yes. morning. Yes. 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 Sometimes you can feel it. Then to him that is able to keep you from falling. Yes, yes. And to present you faultless before the throne of his grace. Jesus. The only wise God, our Savior. Mm. What? Be the majesty, power, and dominion, both now and forever. And the church says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.